In the Paleocene, condyl arts like this example here were the dominant uh, mammal on Earth, and in many areas, the dominant fossil. And from the condyls, there are a great diversity of even toed artiodactyls. The herbivores today with you know, uh, an even number of toes, the, the big uh, nails at the end of the toes form the hooves. The quote, ho, quoven, uh, cloven hoof isn't really a cloven hoof, it's actually just two separate hooves on two separate uh, uh, toes. Um, but there was another branch of the family tree, the perissodactyls, uh, which have an odd number of, uh, of toes. Uh, and so um, this includes uh, rhinos, um, tapirs, and a few uh, fossil uh, groups. So I'm just going to quickly go to an image or two of, of the fossils. And so from um, fossil um, herbivores uh, looking something like uh, this uh, would come the tapirs, and there are a number of tapirs alive today, including this one from uh, South America. This was one of the animals which went from North America to South America in that great American uh, interchange. Uh, and then there are tapirs in other parts of the world uh, today, like uh, Southeast Asia. Here's a tapir here. There are a number of different types of rhino alive today, but rhinos have been far more diverse in the past, including uh, rhinos which lacked horns, the woolly rhino which was adapted for um, uh, uh, for life uh, during the ice ages, and then elephant-sized uh, rhinos with six-foot-long horns, and then rhinos include the largest land mammals ever to live. So the indricotheres uh, were enormous um, uh, mammals which stood more than 20 feet tall at uh, the shoulder. They lacked horns, uh, but they were rhinos. Uh, there were rhino cousins known as brontotheres. One of the big differences in the brontotheres is while rhino horns are keratin, there is no bony core for a rhino horn. It's made of, of keratin, the same substance which makes uh, skin, hair, and nails. Uh, brontotheres had bony cores. Now, the first ones didn't know were quite small, but the group evolved to make a diversity of forms, uh, which you, know, you can see in uh, museums. Uh, these brontotheres, once again, uh, distinctive because they had a bony core to their horns. There were other perissodactyls. This one was horse-sized. Uh, this one had elongated uh, fingers, you know, and kind of walked on its knuckles, similar to the way that um, gorillas uh, might uh, today. Um, let me show this quick, you know, video clip. Uh, and so, in addition to the artiodactyls, which are a dominant uh, group of herbivorous mammal alive today. There were a variety of, of parasodactyls which have lived in fossil times uh, as well, uh, including uh, uh, those uh, indricotheer uh, uh, rhinos, uh, which were once again the largest land mammal ever uh, uh, to live uh, standing, you know, uh, 20 feet and more at uh, the shoulder. Perhaps the best group, uh, uh, the best known group, and the last one, uh, which I'll cover, are the horses. Now, horses are not only important today, but a wonderful example of evolution of the adaptations of modern organisms through a slow, gradual uh, stages. And so horses are descendants from condylars, uh, from uh, the Paleocene. Um, but the adaptations of horse, horses, their large size, their ability to ingest uh, grass, uh, the uh, modified foot, which has one uh, toe, these all developed very uh, slowly. And so the videos in this uh, playlist uh, go through uh, uh, the horses uh, in both um, uh, their, uh, uh, their body shape, uh, their skulls, and uh, their uh, feet and show how they gradually uh, changed over time. So this will just be a quick overview of uh, these horses. Uh, the earliest horses uh, from the uh, Eocene were small forms. I mean, some were the size of uh, cats, like Hyracotherium. Um, uh, they had three toes on their hind feet, um, but they still had four toes on their front 
uh, feet, although uh, these, um, uh, these lateral toes would soon be uh, lost. Uh, they were not specialized for eating grass. They didn't have those modified uh, teeth uh, yet. Um, uh, and uh, the world during the Eocene was warmer and wetter. And so rather than grass covering much of uh, the planet, it would have been more typical uh, uh, plants. And so they would have been browsing on leaves rather than eating uh, uh, grass primarily. So this is where the horse lineage starts in the uh, Eocene. Um, there are a number of other small three-toed uh, horses uh, as horses spread uh, throughout primarily northern continents at first. Um, they had three toes on their hind feet, um, but their front uh, legs retained uh, four toes um, uh, for uh, a while. Uh, these lateral toes would eventually get smaller and, uh, and smaller uh, and be reduced to splints. So there would be remnants of uh, uh, the bones um, which would uh, adhere to the, the central uh, toes. Um, by the time we um, are getting to forms like uh, myohippus, uh, the teeth um, are uh, highly uh, modified and starting to adapt to eating um, uh, uh, grass and, and to chewing uh, more. Uh, the problem with grass is that it has silica in it. And if your teeth aren't adapted for eating uh, grass, then eventually the silica wears the teeth down to their, the gums. And uh, most mammals would not be able to, um, to make a living off of this. Uh, those which eat grass have to adapt their uh, teeth. They have high crown uh, uh, teeth. And so this was happening uh, gradually as grasses were now beginning uh, to spread as the world became cooler and, um, and, uh, and drier. And so um, and these, uh, uh, the spread of grass not only meant that they would have to modify how they ate, um, but then also how they moved. Um, because the earlier uh, uh, horses, they lived in the forest. And, and, you know, and let's say you live in, say, a forest environment. And let me just use these. Sorry for the, the weird thing that Zoom is doing. Um, let's say you have, you have three toes. Uh, well, in a forested environment, you're not sure where your predator might leap out from. It might come from behind that tree or, you know, behind that rock. And so as you move quickly, you might have to dart this way and then use these lateral toes for support or dart this way and use these lateral toes uh, for uh, support. So the lateral toes are important if you have to change direction quickly. As the grassland started to spread, now when you run, the importance is to run very fast in a straight line. If you have a predator, you can typically see it from a long way off. And so what would happen is that these lateral toes would gradually become smaller and smaller. No offense to anyone. Um, and so um, uh, these lateral toes might still be of use, we'll say in muddy ground where your foot would sink in, but one toe became prominent and its nail then became uh, the, uh, the hoof, which covered you know, the fat and distal uh, bone in uh, the toe. Um, this was now supporting a bigger animal, which was running fast in a straight line over open ground, as opposed to the three toes, which were supporting the uh, smaller uh, animals, uh, which would now you know, be shifting from side uh, to side um, uh, in less regular ground. So notice here in Merikippus, the lateral toes still exist, but they're no longer the prominent toes. They're smaller, maybe in muddy ground, they would still contact uh, the uh, surface, um, but it is now that, uh, that one uh, single uh, toe. Most of the horses that have ever existed have had three toes. And so today, when we think of horses, we say, oh, sure, there's horses. There's, you know, a couple of kinds. So there's a couple of wild horses, some wild asses, um, there are donkeys, etc. cetera. Um, but between species and subspecies, there have been more than 100 throughout history. The overwhelming majority of them have had three 
uh, toes. And so the one-toed horses, they are only the most recent um, uh, uh, lineage. Uh, the uh, teeth gradually separated the cheek teeth from the cropping teeth up front, this space is known as a diastema. Uh, teeth such as the canines were lost, and the teeth once again gradually adapted uh, to uh, being better able to digest uh, plant um, uh, uh, material. Um, and so uh, from three-toed horses uh, came uh, one-toed horses, which would lead to Equus, the genus which is alive uh, today, but even Equus still has splints where the uh, lateral toe bones uh, were um, ancestrally present, fused to the central toe. And there have been uh, cases in history uh, where uh, a horse was born with lateral toes, you know, the ancestral feature. Supposedly in the, the turn of the 1900s, uh, there was a, a circus horse, uh, in, I believe in Texas, that had lateral toes. There is a legend that uh, Julius uh, Caesar had uh, a three-toed horse uh, in his stables and a soothsayer, you know, said because of that, you know, you will rule the world. That's a legend, but it would be interesting if, you know, just a rare variant horse, you know, gave a, a Roman general, you know, a larger ego than he already had. Um, but in, in any case, modern horses haven't always existed. Certainly the Paleozoic Mesozoic era has nothing like these. And even when the age of mammals began, um, there were no modern horses, nor were there the large grasslands where that horses are uh, adapted uh, to. Uh, grasses would be spreading slowly over the Cenozoic era as climate changes made the climate cooler and drier as ice ages were uh, approaching. And as grasslands spread, mammals adapted to eating uh, grass and having the large bodies typical of grazing animals. Um, these evolved slowly. And we can observe that if you just observe the overall body shape. We can observe that if we see, uh, observe the feet, which gradually lost the lateral uh, toes as the Cenozoic era progressed uh, until uh, the lateral toes were essentially uh, splints. And then we can see that in uh, the skulls as the teeth were gradually uh, modified for uh, eating uh, grass. Once again, that's a difficult thing. And the, uh, the changes for um, chewing grass with high crowned uh, uh, teeth evolved uh, slowly over tens of millions of years in the horse lineage. And so the parasodactyls, these are the odd-toed descendants of condylars, which include uh, tapirs uh, and rhinos alive today, and the horse lineage, which is a wonderful example of gradual evolution.